Okay, BH. Right. We're back. So one of our most important daily quality control checks we do is what we call our cellar report, where we walk around our entire brewery and get information about every fermenting beer, every bright tank, every everything that we need to check to make sure there's not gonna be any problems. It's done daily on every beer. Every single day. So this is set up just fermenter number, brew date, batch number, the beer, the volume in the tank. Original gravity, IBUs, finished beers will have be blank here. For many beers, we'll check the gravity and the pH. Uh, pressure in all the tanks, we'll go around, look at every fermenter, check out the uh, whatever, the PSIs, everything to make sure yeah. nothing's getting too heavy or something's not been closed, vice versa. Temperature of everything, whether it's crashed or fermenting, we need to know that. Uh, I keep track of the diacetyl or BDK, this little diketones. To Do make that daily? Uh, as needed, so pretty much in the week we do after, um, last week's beers. Uh, and then end of fermentation date and any sort of notes we have as well. Second page for us, bright tanks, kind of similar setup. We have different metrics then for CO2 levels, cooler temperatures, water usage, glycol temperatures, cooler temperatures, hop cooler temperatures, uh, all these different things. Canning line information. Uh, for brewing, I'll check water quality stuff. I think we did water previously, last time we did this class. Yep. Now, information goes here as well. So for us, we're gonna go around every day and pull a sample of beer. Uh, I like these guys, they're 500 mil, half liter, uh, screw top uh, plastic tubes, you got my Amazon. Uh, fill it by halfway or so, about 250, 300 mils. First step, you always wanna shake it up, make sure it's degassed. So pull, pulling the sample, we went through all the same sanitizing, mm -hmm. sanitize the pour. Yeah. We're not, we're not flaming stuff. it, we're just gonna spray the isopropyl. Pull yeah. the sample off. Uh, shake it a few times to degas it. Uh, pH meter. This is a very nice one. Uh, these things new are about 800 bucks. Used 350 range or so. We've had this one for 11 years. They last a long time. So I encourage the investment. Uh, at some point, if you're serious about a good lab. Yeah. Move the cap. That's just a storage solution. So it's the electrode stays Primed electrode, temperature probe, uh, pH temperature are related, so you get different readings so that the temperature wanted, probe will want, count. You want both at the same time, yep. temperature and pH. So drop them in there and let it equilibrate. How long does it take? A couple seconds. Uh, this is a batch of Amber's Two Moms. It was brewed yesterday. Uh, new beers will have a slightly higher pH, about four and a half. Uh, we always want to see pH drop below four and a half at some point. That's the magic number for a lot of pathogenic bacteria and harmful things. So one of the great things about beers is not regulated by the FDA because there's nothing that can grow in beer that can hurt you. Listeria, E. coli, salmonella, all of those cannot thrive in beer. And one of the biggest reasons is the pH is below four and a half. Yeah. This beer is less than a day old, so it's just getting started. Nice. A finished beer will be around four one, four two. We'll even see some sunlights and. I the high three nines. That's, um, that's sunlight? That's, no, this amber is two miles. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. So pH 4.56, that's great. That's what we all write that yeah, number so down. Yeah, so one, one day in, you know that's yep. where you should that's, be. That's about right. And this is basically telling you, based on experience and tracking this in the past, mm -hmm. that you're right on track. And what, what are you looking for? What if, what if you're not on track? What are you, you going to see? Uh, it depends. So you got to think about it too. When you, when you mash in a beer, what's the mash pH? 5.2, five, 5.3, two, five, 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 yeah, somewhere in that range, that's great. Once you finish, do add your hops and you chill it down in the fermenter, we check the pH of every uh, beer in the whirlpool. Uh, and then again, as it gets in the fermenter, when it's all said and done, before we pitch yeast. Typically a beer in the fermenter will drop from 5.3 to 5.0 once it hits the fermenter. So uh, 5.0 five, five, oh going into the fermenter. Right, so we're not seeing this down to four and a half, that's great. If it's still at 5.0, that's telling me that the yeast is not doing their job. The yeast are being real slow, they're not actually working and fermenting. That's to be an issue. Right. If it went up, I don't know. That means someone left a cleaner in the tank or there's still caustic residue somewhere and they increased the pH too much and we have a bigger problem to deal with. Yeah, you know, it seems like that's that's perhaps what almost what we're, we're, uh, we're checking more at this stage because you know your yeast is healthy. We just, we just sure. went through yeah. uh, all of the steps you take to make sure you have good healthy yeast. Yep. But you don't know how the fermenter was left. Sure. And if there are um, 
uh, residues or something in there or something happened along the way of getting into it that that is messed up the process. Right. Same with the acid beat. All tanks are acid sanitized, so if there's any acid left over, we'll see a low pH. Yeah. But typically, we won't see a low pH at this stage in the process unless there is chemical residue left over. If we see this beer three, four years into fermentation down at three and a half, that's a very good indication there's a lactic acid producing bacteria present or some sort of acid producing bacteria present. So that's a sign of infection. Um, again, every beer depends on the day of fermentation, what the pH should be. We have that range, we know that range, because we do this every day. And, uh, you know, pH is so important, and I think it's so often overlooked. Agreed. Um, they check it for the mash, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But then a lot of people don't check it after that. Right. And there's so many steps. If the pH is off in a finished beer, whether the yeast didn't do its thing or you had some other issue, that beer's not going to be as good. No, it's not. You know, if the pH doesn't drop low enough, flavors don't pop, they mm -hmm. taste muddy, um, kind of overly sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, you you got to get down in that four, below four and a half range for most beers. Right. Um, otherwise, it just creates these really muddy, blah, yeah. Again, blah beer, beer beers. Is acidic. Beer is an, it's below seven, it's acidic yeah. product. Give a beer at 4.7 or 4.8, that's more basic. So kind of have that same feel of putting baking soda in water. It's a real kind of heavy minerality that's not super pleasant and enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, and pH again being a logarithmic scale, a 0.1 difference of pH is a full, in, full one-fold increase in the amount of hydrogen ions. Now, for Amber's, Amber has two moms. That's more of a, a caramely malty mm -hmm. beer. I haven't had it in a long time, but uh, uh, it's an American Amber. Yeah. Yep. So. Yeah. Is that kind of right? Yeah, it's less hoppy than it should be from American Amber. Okay, but, still but, but sort of in that in that yeah. vein. So, so it's more of a multi beer. So I'm a little, I am a little surprised that it goes down to about 4.1. Yeah. Uh, 4.1 is certainly where I want to see pilsners and and things like that, drier, crisper beers. Yep. But regardless, getting down around 4.1 is uh, is a great place where your flavors are going to pop and the finish is going to be nice and. Right. So something, don't overlook it. Don't overlook it. All right, we're going to check my strips. Yep. So pull these out. Yeah, this is the new one, yeah? Uh, which one did you pull from? This guy here. Yeah. So it's a, it's a quick one, and then you have to check it within 15 seconds. So... Yeah, we just we say that's it. Somewhere around there. Here. Somewhere around that uh, range, maybe a little lower than that. Uh, yeah, it's a little more orangey, I guess. Yeah. I think it's a little more orangey. Yeah. I would say that one is. I would have guessed that that's that's a weird color, actually, it is. isn't it? Or if the color of the beer is affecting it. Yeah, maybe. Um, you're supposed to just give it a, a quick dunk and shake it off. Okay. So maybe try again. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would guess that that's a little high. What we're doing here is we're comparing to basic uh, cheapo little, you know, uh, test strips. So quick dunk, shake off, and then a quick test. Sort of similar. Yeah, I would say that that color is somewhere between 4.7 and 5.1. So I would, I would estimate that about 4.9. Yep. And where were we? 4.5. Five eight, something like that. Yeah. Four five. Or probably about four six. Yeah. Yeah. So about about three points off. Yeah. Check check my uh, uh, my old strips. So this gives you an idea of. How inaccurate these these little strips can be. Oh, it's actually closer. It's probably closer to the four six range. Uh, that's actually real close. Yeah. So my my old <laughs> expired uh, my old expired strips are actually giving a pretty accurate reading right there around four six. Uh, I, I wonder the weird color. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the weird color on that is because it was below. Maybe. Yeah, maybe and it's it too low to read on this. It's scale too low to read on the scale. That's a good point. 
Um, this is, you know, this is that's for checking mash, and so it only goes down to four seven for finished beer. Um, you'd want another scale. That may be what's happening. That may be it. I there. see that. Quick anyway, two. so you know, you, you're taking your your risk, but at least it gets you maybe in the ballpark. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but a good pH meter, whether you've got uh, a nice one like what Kevin's using here or just the handheld devices which you can pick up for maybe fifty hundred dollars yep. yep. um, I've heard I've heard that to really be good go up to about a three hundred dollar one yeah um, and that's at, at the level there you're getting kind of consistent pro level readings um, and then the big thing is making sure you take good care of them keeping them in the buffer, mm -hmm. keeping the tips in the buffer, calibrating them. You have to go through a calibration. See, the, the handheld ones process. you need to calibrate almost every day. You, cal they, you calibrate daily? No, we calibrate this weekly. The handheld ones we use, uh, we don't use them anymore, but we did. They had to be calibrated every single day. Yeah. So they, they work fine. We do need to calibrate them every but single day. But you do day. have to calibrate yeah. every day. What's the process for calibration? Depends on the meter. So typically you get, Rough, roughly, typically you get a solution. Uh, there's one of them. You don't, you don't have to explain it to yeah. show too much, but just a general so, process. General process, you have different buffers. This is a pH 7 buffer. So this this solution here is a 7 pH. Meter itself has a calibration set up. It could do, ours does 4, 7, 10, and 12. You can do as many as you want. Uh, we know for beer, we're pretty much only detecting things between the 4 and 7 range. So I'm only calibrating pH 4 and pH 7. So that's all I really care about. We're not doing anything that's too basic or anything higher than that. Uh, I totally not anything much lower than 4. I mean, 3 might be the lowest we see with some sour beers, but uh, always calibrate at the range you're testing your sample in. So calibrate don't, at the range you're yeah. using. If you calibrate a pH meter at 10 and you're testing beer, then it's going to be off. You're not going to get the right numbers. Uh, so you calibrate between what? Two? 4 and 7. 4 and that's, 7. That's 2 we have. So you, you buy right there they are in the drawer. Yep. We got four, four and seven. Yeah. Yep. Four and the seven, which I showed you previously. And that's so calibrate as often as you need to to feel like you're keeping your yep. equipment uh, accurate. Yeah, we know our beers pretty well too. So if we see a sunlight after day two, we're still reading 4.8, I might check the calibration first before I check the beer. So that's more yeah. likely that has to be the problem with the beer itself. And the calibration process is just, you're, you're, just, you're just putting it. You, what actually do you do on the, on the I meter? I get a little tasting cup, a little three ounce cup, or a, one of the 100 mil beakers, fill it up to enough where I can submerge the electrode and the temperature probe, and then the whole thing is automatic, even the handheld works. You kind of click through, oh, it'll okay. detect it, they'll tell you when it's ready to go. And, hey, you know, the beep or flash or something saying, calibration stored, we're good to go, move but on you, to the next you one. To, you have to tell the device that you're calibrating for a seven. Yes, well, this, so ours, everyone, again, everyone's different. Uh, this one, if I were to calibrate it, let me show you if you want to see the meter real quick. I'm going to hit calibrate. It'll tell me to, if you have a new electrode, there's a different process, but this is the same electrode. Give it a second, and this one automatically will start at a pH, uh, I think it's going to start to 7. It's telling me it wants a pH of 7. So I need to do 7 first. I'll hit the 7 one. Once I'm ready to move on, it goes down to 4 and up to 10 and 12. That's just the way this one's set up. Uh -huh. Some start at four and go up. Some you can pick what you want to do. Gotcha. Uh, follow, this one, follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. <laughs> yeah. Come with That's your meter. All there is to the it. important point is calibrate. Calibrate. Don't trust, especially if you're not using it uh, often. So calibrate sure. it, make sure it's accurate. Take your readings, you know the process is going as planned and you're gonna make better beer. Yep, 100%. All right, good enough on this? Uh, almost. The only other thing we do here is we're checking the specific gravity, or the uh, we check uh, ah, degrees yeah. Plato. We use this guy, Anton Parr, uh, DMA35. That's a density meter. Uh, you could do specific gravity, you could do density. We do uh, extract, or parent extract, which is measured in degrees Plato. Yeah, the, these uh, are great uh, little toys here, but they're, they're super expensive. Yeah, this is about 2,500 bucks, uh, but they yeah, last. I was thinking even more than that. Like yeah, 3, they last, we've had this for 10 years. They work. They last forever as long as you keep them clean. So you, got, you got a few of those. You got one in the lab, one in the brew deck. Yep. And one in Fishers as well. So we have a couple yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, uh, just like hydrometer, instead of eyeballing it, this measures it refractometrically. That's the right word. Yeah. But, 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 but if you're doing it 
so often. Yeah, we're checking. I mean, this is this is just such a time saver if mm -hmm. you're doing it as routinely, yeah. frequently as you guys are doing it. Beer so. saver too. If you, if you need a hydrometer, you need a full 500 mil yeah. beaker sometimes. This I need about 10 mils, and I'm gonna take this, this little plunger on here. I'm gonna suck up some of the beer. It's out. Don't need any more. Kind of clear the chamber first, rinse it out, and then suck it up again. And it's gonna measure it. We're at 3.4 Play-Doh right now, and we're done. That's it. Okay. If we want to convert it, you can change the units. Oh, so you had to, you had to just you hold it sideways for one. I, thing. I, you don't need to. Uh, that's just how I was holding it. Uh, specific gravity at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. 1013. 10.13. So, so that lets you know you're you're right on track on the specific gravity. Right. And I used about five and a half milliliters of beer. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, very easy, very easy to use. Something else we keep track of every day. Every beer is checked for pH and gravity every day during fermentation. Uh, once a beer has the same gravity for two days in a row, we call it done, close the valve, and move on. That beer is not finished for many. Two days in a row, same gravity. Yep. So sunlight. Even with a lager? Lager is closer to three days. Say have Belgian beers, we do closer to three just to make sure. Uh, some I've got some Belgian beers that'll just trickle down a little bit over like two or three weeks, and yeah. it, it's annoying. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's best word for it. So yeah, really easy. Uh, to but that's, that's where uh, that's where your fast ferments mm -hmm. come into play, though. Do you still do you still do your fast ferments? Yeah, the force fermentations. There's some right over here. Want we'll to take a look at those? Sure. So this is a great, super cheap and easy test that anybody can do. These stir plates are like 25 bucks on Amazon. Beakers are pretty cheap. You get a stir bar with them. This is all the amber has two mounds we brewed yesterday. Uh, we'll fill up by 300 mils, let it spin overnight. This forces the yeast to stay in suspension and ferment the beer. Tomorrow, this beer will be done fermenting. So how long? It's about, with, with, within 36, 48 hours of brewing, if you know the final gravity. It's great just as a monitoring tool to see where the beer is at, should finish at. That way, if you see a difference in your beer, you might, higher or lower, there could be a problem somewhere along the way. If I have this beer out here and I see tomorrow, this beer starts at 12 and a half Play-Doh, it was only down to like six, that's an issue. I would expect to see that though, there's be a problem with this beer. Uh, if I see it down to two, and then the final beer finishes at three, something, fit, or something yeah. happened at the fermentation. So it's a great way to gauge what you should expect to see as a final gravity. Yeah, to know where, where, your, where, where your destination is. Exactly, yeah. Now yeah. We, we've, uh, in the past, uh, we've smelled uh, what's happening in these after 36 to 48 hours? They're they're not pleasant. This is not, not great. This yeah. is not finished beer. Yeah. <laughs> it's a diacetyl of acetaldehyde written. Uh, horrible. It, but you're just looking at where is the gravity going? Uh, uh, where's it going to end up? And that's going to tell you something. So that you know when you hit it, you're there. Mm -hmm. Give it one more day your two-day rule, yep. and if you're still there, and it's what your fast ferment told you you were looking for, you know you're good to go and you're where you're supposed to be. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Is that it on this segment? I think so, yeah.